How are you I, doing? I'm Caroline. I just wanted to say hi, and it's my dad's birthday tonight, so I have to. Oh, <laughs> I have yeah, to go get dinner prep, But um, Amanda here is um, from the GPS office, and she's going to make okay. sure everything goes smoothly. Okay, awesome. Yeah. All right. Thank Perfect. you again for doing this. Yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely. Thank you. Hi, how are you? Hello. Very good. How are you? Good. So it looks like we have two people in the waiting room who are both the okay. same person. Um, I'm okay. going to let them in. Um, and sure. I guess we can rest the folks like two more minutes and then start at like sure. 4.55. Yeah, perfect. I'll probably have my camera off and I'll be muted and everything. But um, okay. if anything comes up, I'll manage the waiting room and all that stuff. But if you need anything, let me know. Thank you very much. Awesome. Okay. Right. All right. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Welcome to our workshop. Um, we are just going to give it a few more minutes to see if anyone else wants to join. Um, but um, thank you for coming. Um, and my name is Kevin, as you can tell, obviously. Um, but yeah, we'll get started in a couple minutes. All right. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so we are going to get started if you are um, all ready. Okay, so as I said before, thank you for coming to the Writing for International Students and ESL Learners uh, workshop. My name is Kevin. I am a professional tutor in the Academic Achievement Center. And um, yeah, without any further ado, we will get started. All right. So just to go over what we will be covering today, uh, we are gonna start by going over the writing process, um, some of the different parts of it. Then we will go over some resources that are available to you. Um, then we will talk about using APA and MLA, um, how to do in-text citations, all that kind of stuff. Um, then we will talk a little bit about plagiarism uh, both what it is, how to avoid it, all that kind of good stuff. And then I'll have a few final notes for you. Um, a lot of this may be review, um, but I think it's important to go over anyways. Um, you know, writing for college is difficult for sure. And it's easy when you're um, like really focused on an assignment to forget some of these things. So even if it is um, a good amount of review, I think it will be very helpful. All right. So um, are there any questions before we get started? All right, I'll take that as a no and we can move forward. Um, but if you do have any questions at any point, just feel free to uh, raise the hand on the Zoom um, and I will um, check in. All right, so the writing process. I've broken it into um, four or five sections for us. So we have pre-writing, um, researching and outlining, which I put together because they often will kind of feed into each other. Uh, then we have drafting, which is going to be mainly the writing the, the paper or the assignment, and then the editing stage, which is very important as well. Um, so let's go into each one of those a little bit deeper. So um, for the pre-writing stage, 
Um, this is basically your planning period, right? You're going to be figuring out what you want to write about, how you want to say it, um, and what kind of focus you want to have for the assignment. Um, in this uh, pre-writing stage, it's always important to ask yourself questions. Uh, so these are three that I always ask myself, right? What do you know? What do I think? And then what do I have to find out? Um, and it's okay if you uh, don't know a lot or you think you know more than you actually do. It's just to give you an idea of, um, you know, what you might need to really look for in your, um, in your paper, what you need to focus on, all that kind of stuff. You know, it'll really help you find your focus. Um, the most important thing I am trying to say, um, it's very easy to lose sight of this when you have a lot of things you have to do for an assignment um, and things start to get jumbled. So I think it's really important to find the focus, like the lens that you want to um, put your assignment in. Um, you know, you want to figure out why are you writing this? And then everything that you put in should contribute to your main focus. Um, so it is also a process, right? Pre-writing may not happen right away. You may not figure out everything that you're gonna say um, in that first shot. Uh, it is important to remember that it is a process and that it's not set in stone. So things that you come up with in this uh, stage, you know, they don't have to stay the same, but it's a good, it's a good way to get you thinking about your assignment and what you really want to talk about. Because once you figure out what you have to say, um, it becomes a little bit easier in how to say it. it. Trying to do both at the same time can be very, very challenging. So it is important that you um, understand that, you know, you do have a plan before you really have started writing and that that can change, right? So then other examples of what you can do for pre-writing besides just asking yourself questions, you can free write. Um, so that is kind of just kind of like a stream of consciousness. You would sit down and not worry about grammar or spelling or anything like that. You just write and it can help you find out the answers to these questions about what do I know? Um, and maybe some areas that you don't feel as strong in would come out. Um, you can also do some preliminary outlining and or researching. I tend to do that for my pre-writing. I'll have like a, an outline of just very basic, you know, this is what I wanna talk about. And these are some reasons I think that it might work out. It's a very early outline. It can definitely change. So don't feel set to it. But having a plan even before your research can be really helpful and beneficial. All right. So after uh, pre-writing will come your researching stage. Um, or also you can do outlining at this point too. I put them together on the main page because they often will inform each other. Uh, as you do research, your outline is, is bound to change. And that's good. It's a lot of times we feel like we can't, but it's really good that you do research and your ideas about what you're writing may actually develop over time. So that is really good to do. Um, but right when you start researching, you wanna determine your scope. What is the assignment and how specific or general are you being about the, the topic? And that'll help you try to narrow your researching a little bit. If you're talking about a big topic, um, say something like, um, abortion in this country, right? You would drown in the information just trying to look up like abortion and United States. Um, so you want to figure out what are you talking about? What's your scope and how specific are you going to be? That'll really help you inform your research. research. Um, so you want to use every single source that you use for a specific reason. I know that sounds a little silly, but sometimes we find sources that we know is talking about the information that we need and it feels good, but we don't know exactly what to take from it. Those sources are okay to have and save, but if you end up quoting it or paraphrasing from it, you wanna have a very specific reason as to why you're doing it. If the reason is just, it looked good or I needed another source, then it's not good enough, right? We need to find a very specific reason for why we wanna use each source. So, um, as far as coming up with sources, uh, we can go over some tips on how to identify a strong source for you to use. So scholarly sources are always good. They're gonna be peer reviewed. Um, and while they may not always be like 100% correct, they are going to be uh, sound in their reasoning. 
and they're going to be totally valid for you to use in your argument. And you can find uh, scholarly sources through the library website, which we will go over a little bit later. But anything you find on the library database through, uh, through the library is going to be a scholarly source and absolutely um, a strong source to use in your assignments. If it isn't a scholarly source, there are some things that you can consider to try and determine if it is a good source to use. So author is something to consider. Um, you know, who are they? What is their purpose in writing? Um, are they trying to convince someone? All of these things are important to keep in mind, right? We are trying to determine the author and the piece's objectivity. Is it you know, full of opinion uh, without backing those opinions up with facts? That may be a sign that it's not the best article to use in your paper. However, if they're trying to be as objective as possible, that could be a good sign. And then credibility. So you know, where is it posted? It's likely that a non-scholarly source would be uh, from a website, um, from online. So what is the website? Have you heard of it? What is their purpose? Um, all of that is going to go into whether or not it is good to use for a source. If you're unsure, you can always ask your professor or come see um, someone in the Academic Achievement Center and we can always give you some further tips on that. And then my final, my final tip for researching is to take notes. It's very important. Um, I know I struggled with that when I was in, um, when I was in school. And, but when I finally started taking notes, it, it is, totally, totally the most helpful thing ever. When you, uh, you know, if you read four articles and you find some good things and then you take a break for a few days and come back, you almost have to read the articles again. And that is not effective, right? That's going to be a waste of time. So what you can do is you can take notes on the really important things on, um, in each source that you find. And I think it's super, super important to cite in your notes, right? Give the original author the credit in your notes so you don't accidentally forget to cite them in the paper. Um, this does not mean you have to cite it in MLA in your notes. Just make sure you know where it's coming from and that the idea is not yours because we wanna definitely avoid plagiarism, which we will get into a little bit later as well. All right, so the next um, step in the writing process is outlining. Um, like I said before, outlining and research often happens at the same time. Um, and that is totally okay. Uh, so outlining is really going to be organizing your thoughts. Um, you know, you're going to be figuring out how you want to do the paper, what order you want it to be in, all that stuff. So it can take many forms. And I, my biggest advice to you is to do what makes sense to you. So if, if we jump down the slide a little bit, I've put kind of the main um, English outline um, like format that is often taught to students here. Um, and it can be very helpful. If, if it is helpful for you, I totally suggest you do it. However, it's not helpful for everyone. So what I do with my outlines is I put them on note cards. Um, I do this so that I can move them around really easily and nothing, it really helps me envision that it should be fluid, right? And it can develop as I learn more about my topic or figure out exactly what direction I wanna go into. Um, that being said, you don't have to do that, but outlining is very important. Um, and I, I think it's important that you do it in some sense, whether it be really formally um, on a Word document or if it's on note cards or if you do like a mind map, all of that is acceptable. Um, it's really for you. You just want to do something that'll help you. All right. And then drafting. So this is really where you're gonna be writing the paper, right? I say drafting is very important. Obviously writing the paper is very important, but understanding that there will be multiple drafts is, is also um, very crucial. A lot of people will try to write perfectly on the first shot and that is impossible, even for the best writers. So uh, kind of letting go of that and understanding that you will have to make edits can make it a little bit easier to, to keep moving and, and to build momentum up while you're writing. So this is another big one. I say write in any order that helps you. Um, almost everyone I talk to who writes, writes from the front of the paper to the back of the paper. And if that is what makes sense to you, do not stop doing that. Um, however, I found myself not really uh, jiving with that. 
I, I didn't uh, really, I wasn't comfortable with it. So I would always start with the introduction, which as we know is supposed to be like a roadmap to your paper. It should tell you everything that's important um, that is going to come throughout your paper and give the reader a sense of what you're going to be writing about. Um, but to do an effective introduction first, therefore, you must already know exactly what the paper will turn into, which I found that I would do the introduction, write the paper, and then go, after, go back and have to change the introduction. So now I start with um, the body. I start with where I feel most confident in the paper. It may not even be the beginning of the body. Um, there is an alarm going off here. Um, it's been going off all day, but I'm going to wait a moment um, just so I'm not trying to talk over it. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, cool. Nice and quick. All right. So, yeah, the, my main point there is, um, you know, when you're writing, there's a lot of tips that people will give you. Ultimately, you want to do what is helpful for you. Um, and that may include trying different things to see what you're most comfortable with. Um, but m writing was so much more enjoyable to me when I um, started doing the things that work specifically for me. So I, I uh, recommend you try different things and, and try to do um, what is most helpful for you. Um, so then in your body paragraphs, um, there are some things you should always have. So your body paragraph should all start with a topic sentence, which is like a mini thesis statement for that paragraph. It should tell us what the paragraph is about, the main point of that paragraph, and it should be the first sentence. So then after your topic sentence, you want your supporting information. This is often going to be a source, but it doesn't always have to be one. Um, the biggest thing here is that you're going to give us the supporting information for that topic sentence. So whatever the reason that your topic sentence, you wrote it, like this is the biggest reason. And if it's a source, the, the next step is to explain it. That is one of the biggest mistakes I see in writing is students will think sometimes that quotes stand by themselves. And even if they are fairly easy to understand, it cannot stand by itself. You have to explain why you are putting it in your paper. You have to tell your reader, why did you use it? It is super important to do this. Um, and this is why you need a reason for using each source, because you need to make that very clear to your reader. Um, you wanna be almost over clear in your writing, like make the connections that you think are already there to be made, make them for your reader, it is very important. And then finally, in your body paragraphs, you can include any other supporting information that may be a little bit secondary um, to that main supporting evidence. Um, ultimately, keep in mind, the biggest thing is that your topic sentence should tell us where you're going with the paragraph, and any evidence you bring in, you must explain why. That is the biggest thing to remember about your body paragraphs. All right, and then finally in the writing process, we have editing, everyone's favorite part. I'm just kidding. Um, so no, perfect, no paper is perfect on the first try, as I've said before. So it's important that you do edit. When you finish the paper the first time through, it is not done. You have to go back and make sure um, that everything is the way you want it. So certain editing strategies that you can use, um, I think reading aloud, especially if you're editing your own work, is very um, helpful. It is a lot easier to hear errors than it is to see them in speech. And when you read and you're reading it aloud, it forces you to really focus on every word. It is, especially with our own writing, really easy when we're editing in our, and reading in our minds to fill in what we meant. Um, it's very easy to miss things like a double the because our brain knows that it shouldn't be there and kind of corrects it for us. When you read it aloud, it'll be much easier to hear these types of errors. So I, I, that would be one strategy that I would recommend. Another one is discussing the paper with a professor or a classmate. Um, you know, these professors and classmates are in the class. They understand the expectations for the assignment. Um, you know, everything that you have to do, they are some of the best resources that you have. Um, and then finally, you can always come and bring it to the AAC to see a tutor. Um, you know, you don't have to do that. And 
It's not like all we do is edit papers, but it can be very helpful to have a second pair of eyes looking at your paper. And we are always uh, here and welcome and happy to do that. All right, so now we will move on to looking at some resources that are available to you, both through the school and just online, um, that can be very, very helpful in your writing um, for your assignments and researching for projects, all that kind of stuff. So your best primary resources are going to be dictionary and thesaurus. Um, and it's very tempting to use the just like the online Merriam-Webster, um, or dictionary.com. And these are fine if you are looking for, you know, a quick definition. Um, however, they are not the best if you're looking for an academic definition or if you're looking to be um, a little bit more specific in that word. So the library in print has an Ox Oxford English Dictionary and thesaurus that is a really awesome resource. And you can find it here if you go to Minuteman catalog, or if you just search in the main laser search. If you look for Oxford English Dictionary or just dictionary, it will come up and it is the golden standard for dictionaries in the English language. So it is a really, really good one to use. Um, so speaking of the library website, that is a great primary resource for you. Um, like I said before, this is where you can find scholarly articles. So the search bar here, if you search a keyword or term, um, it will bring you to a bunch of different databases that you're searching, and all of it will be scholarly peer-reviewed material. So it will all be really good to use in your assignments. Um, that being said, there is a lot of information. There are a lot of filters, um, so you can kind of help uh, guide the search engine based on the scope of your research that you're looking for. Um, and then there is also, if you go into databases, um, and I will have some links at the end of this, and we'll make sure if the uh, PowerPoint isn't shared that, that you guys have access to all this. Um, but there is in databases, um, the Britannica Library Resource Center, um, and that has a really good online dictionary that would be good for academic resource as well, um, as well as the thesaurus and an encyclopedia all on that site. Uh, Britannica is really good and they have a ton of information on, on almost everything. So that is another really good resource for you. And then finally, um, Purdue OWL, or the Purdue Online Writing Lab. Um, it is a super awesome free resource that is available. Um, and we will go through it a little bit on the next slide. So if you go to the uh, Purdue OWL, this is your main page that is going to come up. And what you want to find is here on the left. So if I blow that up a little bit, you can see all of these great categories. Um, so we will be talking about citations in a little bit. Research and citation is where you would find all your APA, all your MLA information and how to do all that. They have a great section on avoiding plagiarism. And then they have a section specific to English as a second language, um, which is really awesome. And then if you click on students, the amount of resources they have is like unbelievable. And Basically, whatever you're looking for, they have something for you. And they have links in there to other resources. It is a fantastic website that I definitely recommend you check out. I use it all the time in my, um, in my work. So I would definitely recommend checking that out as well. So other online resources that you can use? Oh, did you have a question? I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry for uh, the previous one that there is no search box for um, doing some searches. Here? A search box on Purdue Owl? Yeah. So I believe there is a search box that is not in this screen grab that I pulled. Um, I, you actually have to scroll down a little bit to grab this menu. So I believe there's a search box up here um, that would allow you to search a little bit more specifically, if that's what you're asking. Thank you. Um, but again, Purdue Owl is really, really awesome. Um, and the fact that it is free is fantastic as well. All right, so some other resources that maybe uh, you might find helpful. So there are online like grammar checks and all that kind of stuff like Grammarly is super popular with students here. They have both a free and a paid version. Um, and then there's also online translators. So DeepL is one that I've found to be really reliable. What's nice about DeepL is that you can actually translate like whole documents, uh, which can be really helpful, um, not for getting the whole meaning of a document, but if there's 
um, a little piece of it that you don't quite understand, um, it's a very helpful way to translate a lot of text at once. Now, do not write your paper in a different language and then just drop it in here, because I promise you it will not translate well. Um, but it will help you kind of determine some meaning. And then I put uh, Lingui down here too. It is, a, it is like a section of DeepL. It is a translator, yet it is also a search engine. So it will translate the word or phrase, but it also searches for it in context, which can be really helpful with things like idioms or things that aren't quite literal. Um, it'll, it'll determine the way it is often used, which can be super, super helpful. Now, all of that being said, none of these programs are perfect. They can be really helpful, um, but if you use them and you are a little like, I don't know if this is right, you should trust yourself. Um, these are good you know, in a pinch, but talking to someone is always a better option to try to determine the right meaning of what you're trying to say. This again can be very helpful, but don't rely on it quite too much because none of them are totally perfect. All right. So citations and formatting. So all the information I pulled from here is from Purdue OWL. Um, it is again, the golden standard for all this kind of stuff. Um, so we'll go into a little bit about each style here. So APA style, um, it is often used with social sciences. Um, it'll have a title page, section headings, and reference pages. Not every single time, but those are some very common um, aspects to it that are kind of unique. Um, usually, professors will tell you what they're looking for um, in terms of a title page and section headings, but it is important to know. Um, and this is the most common um, style that students come to me with, is APA. So I, I assume that you are going to be dealing with a lot of APA as well. Um, MLA, on the other hand, um, I'm sorry, I do not, they're having issues with that alarm and I don't know why it keeps going off. All right, so MLA style um, is more for English or literature in any language. Um, it is a little bit unique um, and the newest version of it really stresses your ability to decide what is the most important information, which can be a little challenging and a little daunting. Um, but for the most part, the biggest confusing parts that I see are like the containers. So the containers are a general term for whatever is housing the information that you're taking. So a lot of the information you find is going to be on a website. So the website would likely be that container. However, if you look on the library website and find a database and get an article from that database, the database would be that container. Um, and then likewise, if you had a chapter of a book, the chapter would be in the container of the book. It is a little confusing, but containers are just whatever the information is stored in, in a larger sense. Not every single thing will have a container and some will have several, um, but MLA determine, decide, is let, letting you decide what is the most helpful information to help your reader find uh, the source that you're, that you're using. And that is very important to keep in mind that that is what you are doing. You are trying to help your reader know where you got the information from. Good. All right. So then a little bit more for in-text citations. So APA style. So it follows the author year format, um, as is modeled at the end of the sentence. So you would have the author's last name, comma, and then the year. So for direct quotes, APA also wants the page number. So you would uh, do it just like I have it here. For direct quotes, APA also requires page numbers. Um, so that would be page two that I got it from. It was in 2022, and that is my last name. Um, you can also do an introductory phrase. So you can say that Oxalita found that APA also requires page numbers. So if you're quoting, you would still use the page. And if you are not quoting, you would not need that. And you can put the year with the author's name if you are using an introductory phrase like that. You do need the author's name, but it does not matter if you want to do it in text or do it in the, in the actual sentence. So that's the basics. Um, if you're missing information, um, like as far as the author, APA would like you to use the organization or the website or the publisher as the name of the author if the author's name is not listed. Uh, for the most part, again, I think it will be websites or organizations. 
Um, if there are no page numbers, APA asks that you give relevant information. So if it's online um, and there's only a, a dozen paragraphs, you can give the paragraph number. If there are section headings and you got it from a specific section, you can put the section. So APA does give you a little freedom in what is the most relevant information for that piece. Um, there's a lot more to in-text citations, but this is the basics. For more in-depth, I definitely recommend either checking out OWL Purdue or coming to the AAC and we can help you with it as well. Uh, a lot of times it is more helpful to have a person go through it with you, uh, but OWL Purdue is again where I got all of this information from. Sarah, can I ask a question? Yes, absolutely. So if, uh, for example, I uh, read a paragraph or an essay, or I just paraphrase some sentences, should I bring the page number again, or just the book and the year is enough? So are you asking me if you have multiple um, instances of the same page? No, for example, I, I read one, one sentence and I paraphrase it. The same okay. content, but maybe some words are different. Should I bring right. again the page number? So with a paraphrase, um, they kind of leave it up to you. You don't technically need the page, but if it is coming from a specific, like if it's you know a book and there's hundreds of pages and you want your reader to be able to find it, then you definitely can use a page number. APA officially recommends it, does not require it for a paraphrase. Okay. That is a good question. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so now we will go over MLA. Um, so MLA follows the author page format. So instead of the year, you would just be putting the page number. Um, so MLA uses the same citation for direct quotes and paraphrasing, and you don't use the P um, for page that you would use in APA. You just put the, the actual um, number of the page. Um, if you were going to use an introductory phrase, you keep the page at the end. And again, you are going to use the same for both direct quotes and paraphrasing. Right, and then if you're using missing information, uh, for authors, MLA suggests that you use a shortened version of the title of the work. Um, that can be very helpful because it will often, it will be the first thing in your uh, citation at the end of the paper, if you do not have an author to put. Uh, MLA in their newest version really stresses your ability to choose what the most relevant information is. They stress that over and over again, that you are the expert in your paper and you are the one who knows what the best information is for your reader to find uh, the sources that you're using. So they really stress that you um, are able to make decisions if you're missing information. Um, for the most part though, uh, you know, using the, the title of the work is important um, and just making logical choices is really the best thing you can do. So plagiarism. Um, so plagiarism is something that often comes up a lot. Um, and it is something that I think people are like, oh yeah, I, I won't just copy and paste things. But plagiarism is, can be a little bit more than that, right? So it's using another person's words or ideas without accurately giving the owner credit. Um, and I got that from Owl Purdue. So again, most people don't intentionally plagiarize. It's going to be an accidental thing. So the ways that you can do that is you can take notes and forget to give the author credit. And then you read it again and are like, oh, that was my idea. That's a pretty good idea. That is plagiarized because you're forgetting to actually give them credit. So it's very important that you do take your notes while you're researching and give them credit in them. And then citing incorrectly is, is plagiarism as well. And that is why it is really important that you do take your time and uh, cite things correctly. Now that doesn't mean that if you, like again, MLA stresses your ability to choose. That doesn't mean if you choose something someone else wouldn't, that you're not giving them credit. Um, however, you want to make sure that you are accurately giving the reader where the information is coming from. So then how to avoid it? If it's unintentional, these are things we want to keep in mind, right? So as I keep repeating, it's super important that you cite in your notes so you know where it's coming from. Another thing you can do is give yourself enough time, right? Um, 
it is like the worst thing you can do is finish the paper right before it's due and then really quickly try to do your works cited page. It is a lot of formatting and it is a lot of double checking. So you wanna make sure you have enough time to go through and double check all the citations and make sure they are correct. And then there is Citation Machine, which is an online citation generator. It is definitely not perfect, but it is pretty accurate. It allows you to, um, to punch in the information and then it will tell you what it is missing. Um, so again, you should definitely double check these but it, is, it can be a, a quicker way to get started on your citation. Absolutely double check them because it is again, not perfect, but it can be a helpful machine. And there is actually a, um, a link to it right on the Purdue OWL homepage if you are looking for that as well. And it can do both MLA and APA. All right. So, um, things to remember when you're doing these writing assignments. Um, you need to make sure you understand the assignment. It is, uh, it's a big thing that I hear with students coming to the AAC is that they don't know what they're supposed to be doing. And if you determine you don't know what you're supposed to be doing, the worst thing you can do is just like think that that's your fault and try to make do anyways. You should check with your professor or classmates or tutor. Now I underline professor because they are really the right person to check with if you do not understand the assignment. They're the one you're doing the assignment for and they truly know what expectations are on you. And you know, don't be afraid to ask them. They are there to help you. They want you to succeed. Even professors that may seem very busy or may seem like they're not the most available, they are here to help you. That's why they're here and they want you to succeed. So do not be afraid to ask questions if you are um, a little confused about something. And then take your time. It, rushed writing is, is, it may feel like it, it's easier to write when you're on a deadline, but I promise you it does not come out as well. Um, that, now, I'm not saying you have to be done with everything two weeks before it's due, but don't try to start the paper right before you need to finish it. You want to give yourself time. Um, to be able to do citations, but also just to be able to reread the paper and make sure that it is going the way you want it to. Remember, you cannot write a perfect paper in one shot. Um, and then the AAC is here to help. The Academic Achievement Center, um, we are here for you. We have a bunch of um, professional tutors that are writing specialists that can help you out. So um, a little bit more into that is using the Academic Achievement Center. So you can, uh, well, first of all, we are located in the main reading room of the Brennan Library. So if you were to walk into the library, uh, we are like directly across the uh, main reading room. Um, and we have a front desk worker, which is, uh, they can help you get you set up if you walk in, um, but you can also make appointments on Starfish. Um, so I've, I've included the quick links from the Myla Cell page, and Starfish is the last one on there for anyone who's looking for it. But on Starfish, you can go in and select exactly what you're looking for, and it will show you the available tutors um, to help you. Uh, we are here for you. We can help you with any part of the writing process, from pre-writing all the way to editing. Um, Honestly, I think the writing tutors love the pre-writing process. We love the outlining process. It's a lot of fun and we don't get to see a lot of students at that stage when the paper can go in any direction. But we really encourage you to make use of us. Um, we are here for you. We are no cost. Um, so it is, it is um, a great resource for you. I did not put this under primary resources, but you should use us as a resource because we are here for you. Um, making appointments on Starfish is not too bad. That being said, if you haven't done it before, it can be a little confusing. Um, and unfortunately, I don't have the access to the student Starfish to, to mirror it for you. However, um, if you want to come into the Academic Achievement Center, we can help you do that. Uh, we have front desk workers who are trained in helping people do that, as well as the tutors are, are more than willing to walk you through anything you might uh, we do offer in um, in person tutoring, but we also offer Zoom. Uh, we know that it is uh, challenging to get to campus all the time, so we do have Zoom available as well. If that is something that you would be interested in, 
Um, and some of our professionals do have some specializations, depending on what paper you're writing or what project you're doing. Um, we can match you up with someone who might have subject knowledge with you as well. Um, that being said, any of our professional tutors can help with any paper. Um, and yeah, and then I have a reference page as well as some links to resources, which again, I will make sure is available even if you don't have access directly to this um, PowerPoint, if it's just the video online, I will make sure that these links are available to you as well. Um, and that is pretty much it. So did you have any questions for me on anything we covered? I know it was a lot of information. It was a lot of review, but I think, um, do you have any questions? First of all, thank you for the information. Uh, they were Absolutely. very useful for me. The only problem that I have sometimes is about writing references. Sometimes I really get confused uh, to bring the author name first or then the book name. If it's possible to shortly guide me how to write a correct reference. So yes, yeah, so like the references that would go on the, the end of your paper? Yes. Okay, so these I did in APA. So I'm assuming that you are writing in APA for a lot of it? Yes, sir. Sure. Okay, awesome. So the first thing you want to do is funny, you would put uh, the author. So I have no authors here because no authors were listed for any of the sources that I used. However, you would put the, the author's name first, um, and it would come last, uh, last name, um, and then the initials of your author. And it doesn't matter who you're quoting, doesn't matter if it's William Shakespeare, it would be Shakespeare W. Um, and if they have two names, two initials, you would put two initials. Um, and it would come just like this, like CE uh, is actually a good example. There would just be periods in between and a space. Then you would put the date that it was written, just like in your in-text site, like in parentheses, the year. You don't need anything more specific than the year. Um, and it is the date published. Now, again, um, with online sources, a lot of them don't have their published date up there, which especially like all of these update. So they're not going to have their original published date. So what you can do is just put ND for no date. And everything I am going over is walked through on the Purdue OWL website um, under the resources and uh, the research and citations tab, just so you're aware. Um, after the date, you would put a period. And then you put the name of either the article or um, the, yeah, it would be like whatever the source is, is going to be your next name. Now with APA, it's a little interesting. It's going to be in italics and it's going to be up like lowercase letters, except for the first word. So actually in my Brennan Library citation, I made a mistake and put a capital L here because I was just writing Brennan Library, but that is not correct. That should be a lowercase L. Um, does that make sense? I know it's, it's kind of weird sometimes when you have longer titles like Plagiarism Overview Purdue Writing Lab. Also, if you have a subtitle, you would break it up with slashes like this. Um, so that is, even if you have a proper noun or anything like that, it's all gonna be lowercase after that first letter. So that's all in italics, then you put a period and you're gonna have your publisher next. So um, for Deep L Translate, you don't, you wouldn't necessarily have to include both, but including both is not wrong. So I was not 100% sure if I should call Deep L the title of the page or the publisher, so I did both. And that is okay, um, especially for websites, they're kind of both. Um, and then so for like, oops, so then for Purdue, I had, um, you know, Purdue Writing Lab, even though that is what it is subtitled as, that is going to be the, the title of the website. Um, and then you would do the date you retrieved it, followed by the URL. Um, there, you know, you can put additions sometimes if like you're in a hard copy book, but for websites, this is mostly the information you will use. Um, there is a lot of information from traditional sources that aren't always there for websites. Um, but that being said, uh, again, Purdue OWL has a really great um, resource for this. If I just scroll back up, you would go to the research and citation. And under this Dropbox, it says APA 6th edition. And it has 
so many, um, it has like three pages on in-text citations. And then it, it has maybe like 15 on the reference pages on each part of it. Um, so it, it is super helpful. And even though I feel pretty confident in both APA and MLA, when I'm writing, I go to Purdue OWL and double check everything. Uh, because it, you know, it's a lot to, to try and remember. Um, and no one should really have to. Was that helpful? Yeah, thank you. We're here. Yeah, ab absolutely. Um, was there anything else you wanted me to touch on that, that I talked about? Um, again, I know it was a lot of information. Mostly because we are international students, so in our IELTS uh, courses, uh, we had the writing labs as well. Uh, but for me, it was so uh, informative. Thank you for your time. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you for coming. I really appreciate it. All right. All right. And that will pretty much end our presentation. Um, but again, thank you, Sahar, for coming. Um, I appreciate it. And I hope that it was helpful for you. Uh, thank you for you. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you, Amanda, for, for moderating and, and recording. Of course. Everything. I'm glad everything went well. Um, Sahar, if you have any other questions, feel free to follow up with your academic advisor um, about, you know, accessing the Academic Achievement Center and all that good stuff. We're always happy to help if, if you get confused with starfish or anything like that. Um, but yeah, Kevin, thank you so much. That was great. Um, and we really appreciate you taking the time. Absolutely. Yes, been amazing. Thank you for us. Yeah, absolutely. All righty, y'all. Well, have a good rest of your night, okay? Thank you. You do the same. Bye. All right, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.